Hey everybody, and welcome back to Vessel Lab. This is episode 8, and in this episode I'm starting things off a little bit differently, and I'm going to sort of sketch out my plans for this episode before I get into building it. First of all, you can see there's a ton of traffic coming in, and it took me an embarrassingly long amount of time to figure out that this was due to the crowd generators that I had placed down, um, where I wanted some people to sort of go to in the city, and that it sort of generated so much tourism that it was overwhelming this small road. I ended up getting rid of those, and the traffic kind of died down significantly. Um, but also, as I was doing that, I, I figured I needed sort of a better plan to organize the road network coming in, so I built a road underpass kind of in this area, um, going under the railroad tracks, and kind of following some of these farmlands um, to kind of get a sort of organic layout for the roads, um, kind of going around, sort of surrounding this main train station. Speaking of the train station, I ended up replacing the, uh, the vanilla passenger trains. This is a cargo train, which is not going to be there uh, in the future, but I replaced the vanilla passenger trains with some new ones from the workshop, which I think look really cool. And then I also did a ton of detailing work on this front area and made it look really cool in my opinion. And yeah, it sort of really makes things come to life. And it's cool to see people actually using it and sort of transferring between the trains and the tram stop and all different things like that. Um, so yeah, stick around to uh, watch the actual build. And thanks for watching. As I was just saying, I built this road underpass uh, by elevating the railroad tracks coming in and building this sort of uh, running a road under them and then following the lines of the farms that I had set up sort of to get an organic layout for the road system. Um, I also, I, I ended up setting up the roads with the intention of having the roads close to the water sort of carry most of the incoming traffic and then most of the outgoing traffic going on the north side of the station just kind of to separate the two and hopefully create a little bit of a better traffic flow once the city starts to grow a little bit bigger and there's more cars coming in and out. And then these are the trains I was talking about um, that replace the vanilla passenger trains. I think these look so much better. Um, these are just generic trains from the workshop that didn't use ones that exist in the uh, real city. Uh, so I wanted them. I didn't want this to be, you know, thought of as like a like for like uh, build of a real place. Um, these are just the generic Statler uh, commuter trains. They're two levels. They have a lot of cool details like the accessible cars um, and I think just the textures look really nice and they're a huge upgrade over the vanilla trains um, and yeah it's just it's really satisfying to see them coming in and out of the station and actually uh, picking up and dropping off people um, to then kind of walk out and sort of just populate the city and make it look make it look real which is really cool as I was just saying it's really cool to have people actually using these paths and going in and out of the station and just building around that was one of my favorite parts of the series so far and detailing this area uh, which is so front and center in the city and so important um, to making it realistic was really cool. I first started out by placing down a bunch of these um, invisible or I just normal pedestrian paths and turning them invisible um, and you can see people using them to go in and out of the station to catch a train. Um, and then once those were down, I placed down this sort of cobblestone decal um, across this kind of front plaza area to sort of add some more texture. And then once that was down as kind of a base layer, I sort of went through and sort of created a few kind of restaurants and storefronts kind of integrated into the actual station building itself. And to do that, I used procedural objects, um, first by sort of creating this concrete platform and then adding some stairs so people could access it. Um, and then I detailed it up with some fences and some awnings. Um, yeah, this was based on, I looked at Google Earth and I looked at the actual station that this asset that I'm using was based off of. And they had kind of a restaurant look like this. So I figured it was pretty reasonable to put it in. Um, I added some tables, I added some plants, um, just to bring a lot of life to this little, little area. And I can imagine this would be a, a popular place for people to come to get a meal, uh, maybe while they're waiting for a train or about to go somewhere, um, something along those lines anyway. Um, and yeah, I mean, creating places like this uh, is super important. I've talked about it a lot in other episodes, um, but these are the places that bring a lot of life to, to your city, and I was really, it, it was really cool to actually be able to build something like this. 
Um, again, you have any procedural objects here on these window and door props to change the color and size of them. Um, so it just looks like there's actually, you know, they're, they're obviously not actually windows, but looks like windows, does the trick. And then another thing I did is I, I used this, this really cool Starbucks asset um, to kind of just splice it into the station. Um, I can imagine that having a coffee shop like this would make sense in this kind of big area um, where there's a ton of people, a ton of travelers, commuters, stuff like that, need their coffee. Um, so yeah, I figured that was important to put in there. And then again, continuing with this uh, cobblestone decal, um, sort of filling out the rest of the plaza. And then once I had kind of that mapped out, I moved on towards detailing this tram stop. And this is one of the things I think that I was really, I had really focused on and knew this was gonna be important um, to get right. And because I figured this would be an important transfer point um, between the tram network and the sort of longer distance train and metro networks. Um, to detail it, I used intersection marking tool, um, which is super useful for creating consistent detailing like this on stations, um, especially tram stations. I used the tram props, which I believe are from Clues um, on the Steam Network, or Steam Workshops, excuse me. Um, but yeah, just adding props and adding these sh station shelters with the glass, um, the modern the modern touches make it look really cool. You can see I was fiddling around with the uh, invisible networks to get people walking where I wanted them to. Um, but yeah, well, placing down this station was really cool. And, um, I think it, it adds a ton to this, this whole area. You can see I'm placing down some benches, place, places for people to sit while they're waiting for the, the tram to arrive. But yeah, just having people actually use it is uh, super satisfying. And um, you know, when it's a little bit tedious, it's, it's worth it when you see, uh, see the actual simulation running and it's doing what it's supposed to do. After placing down um, the, the detailing on the tram stop, I moved on to sort of creating a network of like sidewalks almost like within the plaza, kind of on top of the older cobblestone texture. Um, those were, I mean, I feel like that just sort of adds a lot of texture to the area and sort of breaks it up from being one big sort of open space. Um, this is a really cool little thing I did. I used these graffiti props. Um, I'm not actually sure where they came from, but I realized I had them. I was subscribed to them, so I figured I could use them to create some kind of uh, public art installation. Um, so that was a really cool detail that I was able to implement. Um, and yeah, this is another, this is going back to the other side of the plaza area. And I extended the bike path network to sort of tie in directly to this actual station area. And I used the same consistent markings that I've been using on this bike network um, from other places in the city. And yeah, this, I'm sort of, you can see I have that fence there. That's kind of just a placeholder to um, mark out what I'm gonna do on the other side. And I'm sort of thinking maybe that that would be, I think that eventually will be sort of like an inner city bus terminal maybe, just to add some more transit options to this station and sort of connect it sort of, so that this is kind of like the main central hub for every transit option in the city. Um, so yeah, that kind of like, uh, concrete area to the other side of the um, the fence is kind of what I'm thinking for there, and then kind of on like just past that, I would also have like I'm thinking the metro uh, the metro tracks will eventually sort of dive under it and then connect underground to the main station building. Um, and yeah, I mentioned that I was going to try to do that in this episode. I, I don't really get around to it. Um, I kind of got caught up in actually detailing the whole station. But yeah, that uh, that'll be possibly this will probably stretch into a, a three part series um we have many series within the within the bigger one um but yeah that'll be really cool just to add more transit options to the city and adding them so they're all sort of connected in this place so you'll have people coming and going kind of at all times which will be really cool as you can see i'm, I'm adding some more plants um just some vegetation to sort of spice things up a little bit um adding it to the sides of the, this building. I figured this this isn't really necessarily a uh, shop or restaurant or anything, but sort of had to fill some space here and adding some bushes, especially these ones, which have which are really nice timber texture. Um, adds a lot when you're just putting them in the background and kind of fill some space that you sort of forget about otherwise. Um, but doing stuff like this is super important, at least that I found, um, just to create more of a realistic looking area. Um, 
again mentioning that I, I placed down the, the Starbucks on the other side of the station. I placed a, a pizza restaurant here. Um, again, I figured this would be a popular place for people to stop, whether they're going like to and from a train or if they just live in the area, maybe. Um, but yeah, this would be a super lively spot, I figure. And again, these some just finding assets like this that have super cool textures and just look super realistic um, is really helpful for, for me in the series. Um, create uh, the spaces that I think look really cool. Um, and yeah, just placing down the small details like the, the tables and chairs, matching the colors, stuff like that adds a ton that you don't necessarily think about when you're building it. Um, I also extended this kind of sidewalk uh, network over here um, and I kind of, I matched up, I didn't want there to be like pedestrian paths that looked like paths um, in terms of networks like from the game running through here. So I, I added these props um, and the, the invisible paths kind of mirror them a little bit. So people will generally walk on them, but it's not exact. And I figured that was kind of the most realistic way I could do it. Um, yeah, and I think it turns out really cool. You can see I'm placing down, yeah, just extending these concrete uh, props throughout the area just to sort of provide sort of an, uh, a suggestion on where people should be walking. Also adding more trees, planters, stuff like that. Uh, these props just add a ton of ton of detail, a ton of interest. Um, benches, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, this kind of plaza area, it's really important because a ton of people just sort of walking through here to catch different more modes of transit and um, making sure it's a it's a nice place for them to be. Uh, it was important in a real city, so I figured it'd be important in in my city as well. Taking a quick break from what's going on on screen. Uh, if you're still watching the video and you're enjoying it, um, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel and give the video a like so you can uh, make sure you're stay, stay in the loop for the uh, continued progress on the city. Um, I enjoy work, working on it and I really want to share with as many people as possible. So, yeah, any support uh, you want to give is appreciated. Um, and yeah, back to the, what's going on on the, on the screen. We have this is me placing down some bike racks. Um, these aren't functional, but they do add like some realism because I have such an extensive bike network in the city. I figure there's there's got to be some places for people to park their bikes. Um, and yeah, this looks up ends up looking pretty cool. I think um, the, the idea of just of having people bike to the train station I think is really cool. And yeah, just place it down. These, these props are really, really helpful in terms of creating um, an area that looks realistic and looks, it looks like a real place. Um, and just having the kind of, even if it doesn't have the functionality, just having sort of illusion of the functionality is important, um, at least for me. And you can see this, this area just really um, has come together really nicely. I really like how it looks. Um, let me know down in the comments if there's, if you like it, if you don't, if there's anything you would add. Um, because obviously I can go back and, and add more details um, just sort of as the series goes on. You can see this, I created sort of a bike shelter type area that I, I didn't record, but I, I sort of copied it over here. Um, and yeah, just more adding, adding more details, the better for, for important sort of high, high interest, high visual places like this. You can see this area just, it's a really, it's really cool, I think. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now I'm moving on to doing some detailing work on some of the intersections. This is like right in front of the station. So again, it's pretty important. Um, again, focusing on the bike network and connecting this up with, with the rest of the rest of the bike network in the city is cool. Um, and yeah, you can see those, tra the, those trams there. Those are again from the workshop and they're just, I think a huge upgrade over the vanilla trams that come with the game. Um, and adding those in, I think just adds a ton in terms of realism and it's really cool to see them actually moving around and carrying people from place to place. Um, and yeah, I think those are another really cool asset. Uh, they're again just a generic version of a real life uh, tram, um, which is cool again because it's not like marked with like an actual city on it. Um, and yeah, th that's kind of another thing I was thinking that like I feel like some of the great YouTube series out there, like they have um, custom assets for the series, obviously. I'm not really at a, at a point where I can actually do that yet, but um, if I if, if the series really really gets going, then maybe 
eventually we'll have custom vested land transit vehicles and stuff like that, uh, which would be super cool. Now moving on to extending um, the actual buildings a little bit. This is more, this is like a lot of what the rest of the series has been about, just placing down buildings, uh, modeling some of these waterfront areas off of real places with these kind of narrow lots. I feel like it would make sense because a lot of people want to have um, access to the waterfront. So it makes sense you'd have sort of individual lots that were narrow and so as many people as possible can kind of access that prime real estate. You can see that sort of the fences I have on the other side are again kind of like scaffolding for future expansion um, and I think those are going to be kind of more modern uh, buildings down the line. I sort of haven't figured out exactly what I'm going to do but I think that's kind of the direction I'm headed anyway at least I'm looking for now. Speaking of modern buildings this is going to be this is sort of a modern office block um, but I wanted to build it kind of right up flush with the train station I figured that would be a really cool um, place to have something like this. And again, if you look at uh, old European cities with their central train stations, they're sort of smack right in the middle of the city. So you've had more modern buildings kind of developed right up to them, um, which is a cool a cool idea, I think. So I, I, I used procedural objects to create this sort of building base, which uh, kind of hugs the train station tracks and it's kind of flush with them, which is really cool. And I placed an office building on top of it. Um, and then that kind of created a cool area between the actual station and the building. And as you'll see in a bit, I um, ended up detailing it and kind of created a little bit of a plaza for people to hang out at. Um, I would think that like, you know, office workers in this building would be kind of a cool place to get lunch or whatever, um, looking over the train tracks as they're carrying people to and from the city. Um, so yeah, I was happy with how that ended up looking. Um, you'll see that in a bit. And yeah, I mean, it's this is a cool little area. It's a cool thing to be able to create these super customized buildings with procedural objects. Um, it's a huge asset for me in terms of creating the uh, exact sort of specifications of building that I want um, and sort of getting the vision exactly right. You can see just having the ability to customize things like this and slide them exactly into place uh, is super, super powerful. Now you can see I'm adding some props to sort of create that um, little balcony plaza area that I was talking about. Um, adding some fences in so people don't fall into the train platforms below and then adding um, eventually some tables and planters and stuff like that. All the small stuff that I've been talking about um, previous episodes and previous sort of clips during this, this one. Um, adding some stairs so you can access it both from the from the street level and from the actual building itself. As you'll see in a bit, I'll add some prop doors, which people won't actually, won't actually be able to use, but sort of create the, the visual effect that I was looking for. Um, yeah, this has been a really cool episode, I think, for me to, for me to create. Um, let me know what you think down below in the comments, um, if you've enjoyed it, and if there's any, any suggestions you have in terms of things I could add. Uh, in a bit, I'm gonna show you some really cool cinematic shots uh, including some of like you know people actually moving around and using this 80s areas I've been creating in the past couple episodes um, which is again kind of the most satisfying part at least for me um, so yeah thanks again so much for watching the video give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel all those things uh, they do help help the video get out there to more people which is again something I think is really cool so thanks again and hopefully I'll see you in the next one